Hello, beautiful person. Sorry for that weird beginning. I just had to make sure I turned off the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, dealing with setbacks. That's what I want to talk about today. So hopefully you won't see me slipping on ice just to continue with this day being a day where I am dealing with setbacks. And that's okay. I am dealing with them. So first of all, greetings from snowy Winnipeg. <laughs> My name is Adasa Vittar. I am a life coach and a wellness advocate and the queen of well-being. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that on a regular basis. So that's, that's why I've decided to add it to my staff because it's really important. Well, I'm gonna talk about, I was going to talk about well-being today, but you know what? I could talk about that tomorrow. Today I want to talk about dealing with setbacks because life is, has setbacks. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I should probably, you know what, I'm going to finish my usual introduction because I want to. So, my name is Adasa Vittar. As I said, I'm a life coach and a wellness advocate, and I help beautiful, good humans like you choose life. And what do I mean by that? My mother died at the age of 69 from uh, complications of diabetes, and that is particularly poignant for me today because I'm in a WhatsApp group for cousins on my dad's side of the family, and they were asking about, we were sharing some pictures from long ago, and they asked to see some pictures of my mom, so I dug them up. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to what I was talking about my mom. My mom is, as I said, passed away at the age of 69, didn't get to see my kids grow up. And it wasn't because she didn't know how to take care of herself. It's because she had other priorities until it was too late. So I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to you. And that's why I'm here talking to you and trying not to fall on the ice. <laughs> A little bit more concentration required than usual, and it's all good. As Susan Sly says, it's all perfect. So see if I can hold this without having my glove in the picture. Yes, there we go. So, setbacks. So today, I had some setbacks. I'm particularly uh, a little sad because my absolutely favorite water bottle, uh, one liter glass silicone sleeve water bottle, which was quite expensive, <coughs> I dropped it today and broke it. So now I have to find another one. And apparently the company that makes them doesn't ship to Canada anymore, unless I want to buy it on Amazon.ca for an exorbitant price. So I'm going to have to figure something out, and that's okay. I will. But uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. So first of all, I'm out on my walk, which I wasn't able to do earlier due to stuff happening in my home. And so I'm on my walk, because one thing to do when you are dealing with setbacks is to try and get a little exercise and fresh air, if at all possible. So, uh, yeah, everybody has setbacks. That's kind of how it goes. Like, there is absolutely nobody whose story in life is so charmed that they never, ever encounter <coughs> any setbacks at all. And so the question is, what do you do when you encounter a setback? That really is a question, because it is a given that there will be setbacks. So what you have to do is decide what you're going to do about it. So one possibility is to crumble like a cracker, as my mentor Ray Higdon calls it. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Sometimes everybody needs to crumble like a cracker for a while. But then you need to reassemble that cracker and get moving. Because, uh, yeah, how long can you stay as a little pile of crumbs? And some people stay a little pile of crumbs their entire lives. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that's not what I want for myself or for you. Like if, if that's what they need to do, that's what they need to do. But even if you are a little pile of crumbs at the moment, and you know we've all been there, we've all encountered things in our lives which are way more important than breaking a water bottle or other things that are relatively minor, in the scheme of life. But sometimes big important things happen. Like I mentioned the passing of my mother, 
That's a pretty big important thing. I had a four month old baby. I couldn't even go back to Israel for her funeral. She died like a week after we went back to Winnipeg from our last visit. And so I had, let me see, I had a, a three year old. It was, it was uh, March of 2003. So I had a three year old and uh, I guess he just turned four. His birthday's in March. So say I had a four year old and I had a, a 18 month old. No, I guess he was almost two. And I had an almost two year old and I had a four month old baby. So yeah, there was no way I was getting back on a plane having just come back from Israel. So I didn't get to go to her funeral. Didn't really sit Shiva because I didn't really know anything about how to do that by myself. So yeah, all sorts of things. And you know, and even now, milestones in 2020. My daughter graduated high school and we didn't have, we were able to have a socially distanced convocation in July, but we didn't, we had, party still hasn't happened, may not ever happen. Um, my husband turned a special birthday and yeah, we were not able to celebrate it the way we wanted to. And I'm sure we all have stories. Some people have lost loved ones in this uh, pandemic. And many of us are going around with the feeling that our governments have not done the best job that they could have. In the summer, Manitoba was extremely lucky. And basically, our government squandered that time. And now we are, you know, getting stretched, shall we say. So, um, yeah. Don't want to get into politics, but the fact remains is that a lot of us are hurting and feeling hard done by and feeling like we've had a lot of setbacks. And so the question is, what are we going to do with that? We can spend the time wallowing in our anger and resentment and grief and fear and all of those things. Or we can spend the time that we need to spend to feel all of our feelings and grieve appropriately and I'm not here to tell you what the right time is for grieving appropriately. Here it's been 17 years since my mother passed away and I'm still not done grieving and will probably never be done grieving. But um, everybody has the time that they need to take to grieve whatever they need to grieve. But then what are you gonna do? And the question is if you have a mission, if you have a desire to make a difference in the world, possibly related to whatever it is that you're grieving. So my mission is definitely related to my mother's death that uh, I am bound and determined is not going to happen to me. I mean, I will die eventually, but sure as hell not in 11 years from now, I can tell you that. <laughs> that is my plan, at least not from diabetes. You know, I could always be hit by a car as I get on the side of the road here to avoid that very fate but uh, oh, and here comes the bus I should probably be paying more attention because <laughs> I'm walking on the side that doesn't have a sidewalk that'll do it every time anyway enough rambling I just wanted to ask you how you deal with setbacks take the time grieve what you have to grieve but then are you going to get up, brush yourself off, wipe your eyes, and do whatever your mission is calling you to do? So I would love to hear from you what you're doing. Drop me a message and let me know what you're doing to deal with setbacks in this difficult time. So you have a great day. Remember, I love you. Drop me a message and let me know. And also, if you found this helpful, please feel free to share and comment and all those things because just like anybody else. I could use a boost too. So have a great day. Remember, I love you. Talk to you again soon. Bye.